Good morning, good afternoon, welcome, hello to everybody. Um, I'm very happy that we are starting our next, our I, I don't think so, let, let me think it's the third or even fourth innovation talk. And I'm very happy that Olivier Bossard from the UPU is um, with us. Uh, he is the one who is making all this possible. And I'm as well very happy, happy that Maynard Jakobsen is with us. He is our presenter today and he is our guest in this innovation talk today. And I can assure you it's a very, very innovative topic we have today. But until, uh, we are going into that in about a minute. Before that, Olivier, the stage is yours. Say hello to our guest. Hello and thank you, Martin. Hello, good morning to everybody. Bonjour uh, tout le monde. Uh, it's a real pleasure again to uh, see so many people connected to our innovation talks. Uh, for your information, for those who are connected for the first time, uh, the Innovation Talk series is uh, it's a series of webinars that are being organized by the Direct Marketing Advisory Board uh, of the Universal Postal Union. Uh, the Direct Marketing Advisory Board is, uh, is a group of uh, postal operators and, and private sector um, companies that are interesting in, interested in, in, in developing and promoting uh, direct marketing. And we do a number of activities, including those, those webinars where we bring the views of uh, external experts, of people that are not from directly from the postal community and that are bringing different perspectives, different flavors and, 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 and innovation and innovative thinking to, to the discussion on, on direct marketing. Um, the session today, I think, is extremely uh, interesting and super, I'm, I'm super excited about it because it's basically the merge between what we've discussed in, in January and February. For those who were with us uh, in January, uh, you might remember that we had a fantastic uh, uh, webinar on how to use social media to uh, to promote uh, B2B marketing. And, and, and Martin, uh, who is an expert in that field, uh, uh, did a fantastic job on, in, in explaining how to use uh, uh, LinkedIn in, in, in that regard. And we had the, our, our session in February, early February, um, around uh, how, how, I mean, around the importance of data in building direct marketing uh, strategy and data-driven marketing. And specifically with our colleague from, from Dutch Post, we, we touched upon the, the, the importance of the quality of data in, in, in driving direct marketing. So I think today is really the, the merge between those two discussions, the, the use of internet and the importance of data and data quality. And uh, I'm very excited and looking forward to uh, Maynard's presentation. Uh, Maynard uh, Jacobson is, uh, is a data entrepreneur, if I may uh, say so. And, and we're very happy to have him uh, today with us. Uh, um, he, he's going to share his views and, and, and experience and perspective on, on, on the way we can use the internet in, in, in driving and harvesting uh, a, a, a harvesting data on, on, on the internet for, for B2B business. So I'm very excited, very, very happy to have mine out on board. Thank you very much for taking the time uh, with us this morning. And uh, I wish you a very successful and very, uh, very um, fruitful uh, webinar. Thanks, Olivier, for that nice introduction and as well for making this whole innovation talk series possible. I think thanks a lot to you from everybody. I'm seeing that a lot of you are saying good morning. So I see somebody from South Sudan, from the Arab Emirates, uh, from Algeria, Moldova, uh, from Slovenia, Cambodia, Namibia. I think we are already again all over the world, which I personally really like a lot. And I'm very happy that I can present you Maynard Jakobsen as our speaker today. I know Maynard for about, well, I think about 22 years now. So it's quite a lot of time uh, we, we know each other. And um, he's a very, very interesting person, to be honest, because he is an interesting combination of a statistician and a real person. So you normally know these statisticians are very strange people. They are in their data. They are. Uh, not really in the normal world, but he is a good combination because he is as well a statistician, but in the normal world and and has a great sense of business. And um, some ye years ago, he had a fantastic idea. And that's what he is talking about today, about using the web, the internet, as we all know it, in a totally different way as we all use it. So we all use the internet in some way to look for companies and to look for information, but he he looked at the same internet as we are all looking to, but in a different point of view, in a different way. 
and that is what he will be talking about. And I really, I really like that way of, of using data and using the internet in an in a interesting opportunity and making a business opportunity out of that. So very welcome, very warm welcome to you, Minot. We are all Thank interested. You. And I think the, the stage is yours. And Olivier and me, we will be now away a little bit and give <laughs> you the stage to you. So have, have a lot of fun, everybody. And um, it will be interesting. I can assure you that. So <laughs> see you later. And Minot, the stage is yours. Fine. So I will try to share my, uh, I have to, yes, and allow everything. So okay, I will share my screen and I will show you the presentation of today. And uh, thank you very much, Olivier and Martin, for the chance uh, to present uh, our small solution we we have now in in, in Germany and uh, how we harvest the internet or what we are doing in the internet. Um, new ways of data collection and what we are doing this way. Uh, some small words uh, on, on me, I'm, I'm 57 years old, uh, I'm, I'm the owner of Mavancon, this is an agency for analytics in Germany, uh, in the direct marketing area and in the e-commerce area, and I'm the founder of um, B2B Smart Data. Uh, this is a startup in the B2B area where we look for the internet, for the company websites, and uh, what we can do with those information. So we have a little bit of big data, a little bit of artificial intelligence, um, but I will show you with the examples what we are doing there. And uh, so we will go here. And so what about the content? Talk about big data, where we are, what about the companies? Uh, how can we look for the companies in the big data area? What is web intelligence for business? What we are doing there? We have a lot of examples that we show you, the methods and best practices we are doing. And uh, last but not least, we are talking about our, our strategy for our company um, that we founded five years ago. Now we are seven people and um, we are working on this topic uh, with seven uh, people, uh, with the staff, uh, that's all we have. Uh, we have a lot of computer, uh, we have a lot of uh, data, uh, but uh, we can work with a small uh, um, number of employees on this uh, thing. If we look at big data, what is, what is big data in the, in the, in the, in the surrounding? Big, big data is, is, is for components. We have a big volume of data that's very, very big at the end. We have we have setabytes uh, of data, we have video, and we have a variety of data. We do not only have text and numbers, we have text, we have video, we have, we have uh, chats, we have all this information. That is not that good structure. The variety of data is a very big problem to get this information to be analyzed, to be understood at the end of the day. Uh, we, have, we have a big velocity, we have a very, very, very great uh, uh, data flow, and we have a variety that, that means that, that uh, the data the uncertainty of data, is it correct data? Do we have some, some other data and so on? And these are the, the, the four Vs of big data. There are some more Vs, but they are the main uh, big data Vs. If we look at our world now, we, we, we are talking about zettabytes. Zettabyte means, uh, I think it's, it's a petabyte, uh, exabyte, and then zettabyte at the end. And uh, we'll have eight times more. In eight years, we will have uh, eight times more than in 2017. That means a very, very, very big data universe around us. The data is there, and we can use this data to get more information about what we want to know. And uh, if you look at uh, what's, what's, what's happening every minute at the moment in 2020, we have more than 200,000 Zoom hosts. Um, participating. We have Reddit, maybe you know about the, the, the um, um, game thing about in America. We have Reddit, we have 500,000 people engaged with content. We have Netflix, 400,000. DoorDash gives more than 600 meals uh, every minute, every minute. In Instagram, we have 350,000 stories. YouTube, 500 hours of video every minute. Every minute, 500 hours of video is uploaded to YouTube. Twitter, we have 320 new users. We have in marketing, consumer spend $1 million. We have Facebook uploads, 150,000. We have WhatsApp, billions of messages in WhatsApp in a minute, not in a day, not in an hour, in a minute. 
And at the end, we have a lot of people making video calls like we now do at the moment, like we do it as uh, the system we have on, on Martins. We have Microsoft Teams, uh, 50,000. We have Facebook and so on and so on. So, on. so the data is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. We get more and more data, but how can we use it? If we just go down to us and look, okay, how many websites do we have around the world? How many websites do we have? Almost every company has a website. So we have a lot of websites that are private, but most websites are from companies. And if you look at the websites, uh, we started in 91 with one website. It was a CERN. I will show it afterwards. And then came Yahoo, then came Google, then came Facebook, then came Twitter. And at the moment, we have one about 2 billion. You can say one about 2 billion websites uh, all over the world. Uh, these are the websites you can use, and these are the websites of the companies. And every company has a website profile, and we can use this information uh, that uh, is concerned with, this info with, the, with the website. This was the first website. This is a CERN website. Uh, on the right side, you see, okay, this is an experiment. The, the, WWW is a, the WWW is an experiment. Uh, and they talk about this experiment, what they are doing there. You can look at uh, in, in the old archives of the internet. And this was the first website, uh, as we know, uh, which started in 91. Every company has a website. So what we are looking, what we are, what we are doing, this is, uh, our, these are my colleagues. No, I'm just joking. These are the, the robots we have. So we look on all those websites and want to make a structure from all those websites we have. Okay, at the moment, we have websites from Germany and Italy. This is uh, Germany was the base, and now we are starting with Italy. But we can do this strategy all over the world for every company and for every market at the end. What we are doing in Germany? We have around about 17 million websites in Germany. We are looking on the website. Is this a website for a company or for nearly a company? I would show later on. And uh, what we are doing then, we crawl the data. We look for the data and put it down down on our service. That means we have a customized web crawler. We do not use those standards. We have a customized web crawler because we have so so big amount of web information we want to collocate from the websites. We take those data and put it into the database. Yeah? So we have all those uh, HTML source. We have uh, all those pictures. We have all those uh, programming information. Uh, and we have one about more than 3 billion words website combinations in our database. It's a very big database with uh, AWS uh, where we locate it. And we make it near time, I would say near time. So we look on every website in Germany once a month. And so on some websites we look daily. And so we have a big database on all those websites. And then at the end, we have an analytic framework around those websites, what we are doing. So we have all this information. What can we do with this information that we have in the database? We call it down. And what can we do now with those information from the website? So uh, this is what we call web intelligence solution. So if you look, uh, if you want to Google or if you want to Bing, uh, I would say if you want to search on the internet, you say Google in Germany. And if you want to Google some information, you just say, OK, I want to Google some information for, 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 for cup producers, maybe. And if you have those information for cup producers, you say, oh, the biggest one and so on. And we're doing, we, we, we do this automatically. So we have all this information. We can give you all the, the cup producers users in Germany, if you look at it. But we do not only have the words. We just look how relevant is this word for this website. That means, if you look at the Royal Mail website, you see, you, you know it. Uh, this is the website of Royal Mail. This is with pictures and all so on. But we are looking for the words and looking how relevant are the words for Royal Mail, if we compare it with all other websites in the, in the web. And this is what we get from the Royal Mail. So we get. For sure, we get parcels, we get tracked, we get missed, we get compensation, delivery, and so on. Oh, that's funny, we get aftershaves. They talk about aftershaves on the website. They talk about horses on the websites. Um, I think it's about the history of Royal May where they, where they talk about the, the horses on the website. They talk about the products, the batteries uh, not allowed, and so on packaging, customs, uh, retailers they work for, and so on. So we get a fingerprint for the Royal Mail website. And this is the fingerprint we use. And this is just only 200 words, the most important 200 words. But Royal Mail has more than 100 million, I would say 100,000 words on the website. If you look at the UPU website, 
yeah, this is this one. Uh, I made it just, uh, I think, yesterday evening. Yeah, this is UPU website we were talking about, and this is what we get from the UPU website. So we say, okay, you have some some actual information about Beirut, Abidjan. You see it here from 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 Pakistan and so on. Yeah, and uh, but we have also surveys. So UPU makes surveys, competition. Yeah, they talk about uh, careers. They talk about a congress. They talk about stakeholders. They talk about postal, they talk about flights, uh, they have a footprint that is, I think, the, the digital footprint and so on, uh, useful and so on. And so we get a fingerprint for every company, for every company in Germany, for every company around the world. If we have this fingerprint, this is the collocation of the words, we can make analysis on this. And I will show you how we do this. So we have this fingerprint. And we have the fingerprint, this is uh, the count of the words on the website, but in relation of all information in the country or if you're on all information of the world. And you can you use this fingerprint what, to do what? Okay, we have a, a single fingerprint for every company, but we can also make a fingerprint for a target group. And I will show you this on the first thing. So if you have a target group, we, are, we, we can find digital twins on your data set. Yeah? If these are your customers, we you have 231,000 customers in your database, they say, okay, they use this product. Who is the digital twin of this website? This is a question we want to answer. So we take your database, we take the information we get, and we take the URLs, so that means the website information, uh, and we make a data enrichment. If you do not have the information, we find the correct URL on this. And uh, so we have the customer's website, so the second step. If we have the website on the second step, we are making an analysis. We're looking, okay, what about the similarities about these fingerprints? What is the DNA or some of that stuff? What is the common fingerprint of the whole target group? Yeah, this is what we want to do. And then we have an, an, an analysis, like scoring or very, very weak AI, I would say, artificial intelligence that we use. Okay, we have this target group. How can we find the DNA of this target group? If we have the DNA of the target group, we find we can we can use it and 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 look for similar websites that are similar to your target group in all of your country or all of the market you want to you want to reach. And then we find the most familiar the, the most similar company website to your target group, and we can give it to you. And you can mail it, you can call, you can make LinkedIn like Martin does, uh, and we, we also do it. Uh, you can make all those marketing information you want to. So you get to target group and you expand your target group with this. Afterwards, you can sell your activities and you can use this to get embedded, to get more understanding of your, of your target group. And at the end, you take those who react and you make uh, go on and so on. Um, you make a model extension, get better and better, because if you want to get a learn sample, you get a next learn sample, you get better and better in this enrichment process, uh, because uh, you're getting more and more precise in the analytics of the algorithm. But how does it work in, in detail? I can show you an example, uh, but my computer is frozen. Martin, can you hear me still? Ah, now it goes. Okay. Can hear I can see you. Okay, it's working. Fine. Okay. Again, right? It was okay. just it was just my my small computer here. I'm not I'm not uh, in the in the WS. So a small example. We have a target group. It was a company. It was a distributor for electronic companies, uh, making 1.1 billion uh, euros uh, a year. On revenue, so so they have all those components on those uh, um, um, how do you call it boards? Yeah, you have those uh, um, semiconductors, uh, you have those, those sensors and so on. This is what you find on those boards, and they sell billions, billions of components, and they give us a target group of four hundred potential leads. They say, okay, this would be four hundred we want to talk to. Can you find some similar companies? We said, okay, give us the 400. We find some similar companies. Um, the question, can we identify more interesting leads in Germany? And uh, the result was that we get a tech cloud for the customer and we find some very, very interesting things like technology, industrial, integrated, some German words like Komponente, this is components in German, uh, but a lot of English words because those companies that uh, are um, 
uh, in, in the target group are a little bit more international orientated. And we found this uh, tag cloud and uh, got all the information. We said, okay, this looks very, very cool. And it seems to be plausible. And, 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 and this is the target group we have. So let's have a look. Uh, we transpose this target group to the German market. And we found another company. It's not working. Just a second. That's happening. And uh, we got some more addresses. And in the more addresses, we find uh, the best practice Gardena. Um, Gardena is a seller of, of uh, garden lanes. Uh, that means uh, these things where you water the garden and for, for garden tools and so on. But why do Gardena need? components uh, that are on boards. That was the question we had. And uh, they, they, they are in the branches like, like uh, plastic industry or, or some of that stuff. And they are also on the, on the gardening industry, uh, if you look for the branches in the database. But if you look on the website of Gardena, uh, the company we have in Germany, you find that Gardena is trying to get the smart garden. Yeah, the guy is sitting in the, in the, in the, the mountains. Uh, looking on, on his smartphone and looking how his garden is watered at the moment. And uh, because we find Gardena is making the shift on the website, we can give this address to our customer. And the customer says, oh, that's pretty cool. I will never find Gardena with any other method because your method looks on the website. What is now the interesting thing for the company? And this is one thing, and, and uh, my, my, my customer went, uh, or some, some, some salespeople went to Gardena and said, ah, cool that you're here, we have some problems, here's our uh, project office and so on, maybe you can help us with our components, and they make a deal with this. So it works very well at the end, and our customer is very happy with this result. And uh, here what we find on the Gardena website was systems, was automation, solutions, system, uh, this is German words, some worm words, intelligence, and so on. These were the, the, the words we found uh, at the Gardena website, why Gardena is very, very near to our client, and how we can expand in the, the, the target group at the end. So we get a target group, we make a model uh, with this lot of words and find the next, uh, um, um, next best offers and next best companies you have to contact for your business. Um, on the other hand, we can also take this information for market insights. We can analyze this, the, the websites uh, to profound deep insights uh, in the market. Uh, one example on this, uh, um, one back past that was for buses. Okay, it was before Corona, uh, or before SARS. Uh, uh, we, had, we, had a, we had a customer that produces buses. Yeah, and if you produce bus, you want to have some information, how many buses to drive. And in Germany, the, the Federal Transport Authority, because of GDPR, uh, does not publish every, info, every, every address. They just only give for, for some regions. They give, okay, in this region, we have seven buses in one month. That's all. Uh, but my client wants to know who is the owner of the bus. Do he still have the bus? And what we did, we get the information of the, the bias of the buses for, I think, 1,000 addresses. And we looked, OK, how many of those addresses can we uh, found information about the bus fleet, the coaches they have at the, at, on, on the website? Because the theory behind was that the coaches of the, of the, of the um, uh, vacancy agencies uh, that use buses Will, put, will promote those buses that are very extraordinary, very big and very nice and very comfortable. They will show it on the websites. That was what we did. And we found on 58% of the website, we found those coach information, those bus information, that because they show us the bus fleet on the website. And uh, on, the, on, the 50, on, the, on the 42, where we do not find, there were something like Airport Munich. OK, they have buses, but they will never tell about the buses on the website. And uh, here's one, one small example you can see on the right side. Uh, this is from my hometown near the Baltic Sea side. And they have every bus on the website. And they have it also with the plate information and which, uh, which carrier it is. I think it's, 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 it's Daimler Benz at this, at this case, or Citrus, something like that. They have all the buses on the website. And so what we can provide to our uh, clients, we can make a 
database with all those bus information and we have all those vehicle information and we have to change this because when they when they sell a bus and they get a new bus they will put they will promote it on the website and so we get a very very near-term information how many buses does this client have and so we can uh, make a database and uh, optimize the sales with this information on the other hand uh, that's that's was a very very cool project was with dog breeders uh, especially in Corona times now, dog breeders are getting bigger and bigger because everybody wants a dog in Germany, especially in Germany. Uh, and um, so we have those small, small puppies. Um, and what, what's happening? On the, on the website, of, uh, we have in Germany, we have a dog association uh, or dog breeders association. They have one about 300, 3,200 breeders. But when we look in our web intelligence, we found 15,263 breeder websites. And what we found on those breeder websites is very cool because we have those little announcements where those uh, small puppies will come. And we have around about uh, 30,000 little announcements a year. So they say, okay, we have two dogs and they are paired and now we are uh, expecting puppies. And uh, the owner of the website, the breeder says, okay, we expect puppies um, from Donald and Daisy, if, if you call uh, the dogs this way, and uh, approximately 30,000 litter announcements a year. That means that there's more than 200,000 puppies we expect in Germany. I think in Germany we have around about 3 million dogs at the moment, so this is uh, very, very small. Uh, but if you if you say, okay, 10 years old, then uh, we have around about market share, I think 60% of all those puppies that were born in, in Germany. Uh, but we have to think about the process of dog breeding. If you are a dog breeder, you get those puppies and you want to sell those puppies after eight to 10 weeks. If they are eight to 10 weeks old, the puppies, you will sell it to the new dog owner. So we take this information of the, of the, of the little announcements in the database. We said, okay, they, will, they expect uh, dogs in April. Then we call the uh, breeder in April and said, okay, is it, is it, is it going good? Uh, do you have uh, some, some puppies? They say, okay, I have six puppies. And then we say, okay, wait a second, we will send you information about food, uh, wet food, dry food, and so on. Um, you will get a blanket for the small dogs, and you will get a, a food bowl for the dogs, and so on. And we give those packaging, those parcels, to the dog breeder with our, uh, with our uh, food in it. And uh, they will get one parcel, yeah, so we are here at UPU, so they will get one parcel. And um, after seven weeks, we sent another package with six parcels, because now we know they have six puppies. And this is uh, the parcel you overtake to the new dog owner. Yeah, you give it, okay, here's the dog, and here we have a parcel. This is from uh, dog, uh, from, from food uh, engineering company, blah, 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 and so on. And you say, okay. And what you have, you have the blanket, you have the football. Yeah, the blanket is very important because the little puppy leaves mom, dad, brother, sisters, family, yeah, and gets a new family. So he's very, very nervous in this moment. He's very young, he's very nervous. Um, but the blanket smells for the old family. So he's a little bit more, not that nervous. He's a little bit more calm because of the blanket. And the dog and the football also have those logo on it. Um, so we have a combination of this and we have, and uh, as a new dog owner, you will change everything. You have to change everything in the, in, the, in the puppy's life, but you will not change the foot. Yeah. So we will take the foot because he's very nervous with the stomach and so on, and you will never change the foot in this process. So uh, what our client says, it was uh, prenatal uh, CRM because it's CRM before the dog is born. And we know this because of the information we have on the websites. And so we can combine it with getting more parcels and more packages at the end of the day. Another example, and uh, this was for, for hotel stars. I'm sitting in a hotel now. <laughs> and uh, we made a map web monitoring. It's, it's also published in German. Um, and also Blue Angel certification. So we look on the web. Is the information we find on the website the correct information? So for, for the Dioga, this is a company in Germany that gives the hotel stars in Germany. They want to understand, okay, do they make some advertisement with hotel stars? And they're not allowed to, because in Germany it's under law uh, that you have, uh, you have a regulation of the stars and so on. 
and uh, we found 1,228 cases of illegal star advertisement. So what to do? They get in contact with the hotel, the company of the Hoga, and said, okay, you have stars on the website. You can have our certificate, you have to pay for it, and so on. It was, it was, it was a very big, uh, big um, um, effort, surprise. You know. And uh, they were very, very successful with this. Uh, so they get a lot of companies, a lot of hotels that checked uh, their websites for the stars and uh, made a great deal on this. So uh, this is uh, also published in German, oh, sorry, it's German, but uh, also for, for uh, any certificate you can find. You look for the certificate on the website, look in your database, is it correct, is it not correct, and we can use this information. So we can find all those information on the website. That is what we do. We have all those words that we can use it with the tag clouds you have seen and with the modeling and with the twins. But we can also find employees, for, for instance, on the team websites. How many, how many, if, if, you, if you're going to, uh, to, do, to a doctor website, you see so many doctors, so many, so many. Um, assistants or some, so, so many women working in the, in the, in the, in the, in the practice. Uh, we find who we are, the founding year, maybe like this one. Uh, if you look for the founding year of Microsoft on the website and in the official um, uh, papers, they are a little bit different because uh, they were founded in a garage some years before they were uh, 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 an exact company. We found all those products, we found the, the meta information like software, uh, maybe maybe some e-commerce software. Do they use e-commerce software on the website? We made some projects with just some pixels uh, that we can find, and also social media. We can all find the information of YouTube or Instagram or uh, LinkedIn or whatever they have. So we can company and we have the correct LinkedIn profile of these companies and what we do. If you look at uh, um, employees, uh, this is personal information. But uh, on the other hand, we are just only working with companies. Uh, so what's what's our profession? At the end, uh, we have a low requirement for data because it is available uh, in the company, so we can enrich this information. We have a very fast implementation guarantee. It's just only weeks, it's not months or years, it's weeks because we have a lot of data uh, pre-processed in our database. And you can use our proven and pre-trained AI and so, so we have a lot of uh, AI around uh, this topic. We have this big data and AI. And so we have a very high quality and analysis. We do not find some blocks. We just only find companies, for instance, if you look at this case. And we have identification of customer segments. We can find this very good. And because of we only have business uh, data protection complaint, uh, it, it's data completion complaints in the implementation. It's not personal information, it's only business information for the companies. That's what we are doing in this area. And um, now, 20, yeah, 30 minutes. I'm, I'm in time. <laughs> Sorry for this short technical problem. Uh, do you have any further questions on this topic? Thanks a lot, first of all, Maynard, for that really interesting presentation and all the information you just gave us. I see that the, the first questions are already coming, but let me start um, to, to really understand from a, from a post company point of view of what you're doing. If I, if I understand it right, you're, you have a database of all information on all websites of all companies in Germany or some other countries. Yeah. So, and then you start to use all this information in a different way of things. So some, sometimes you might just use the address of the company um, so that I can, can send, a, send a direct mail to that company. And other times you're using the information on the website, uh, which is more detailed as in the dog breeders, where you said, okay, um, a company is trying to get to dog breeders as customers in the B2B segment, and you found the, the best number of dog breeders. So there are a lot of companies out there in the market who are selling B2B addresses. Um, what is the difference between your approach of, of big data and, and AI to, to these approaches which are already out in the market? Um, do you have an advantage or is it the same or is it just different? What would you say? Yeah, if you, if you look for the, for the Gardena example, 
for instance. You will never find this company with classical information on branch, size, or revenue, or some of that stuff you have usually in the database. Um, so the first thing is that you find your right target group. The second thing is that we have the website in this month, or the, 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 the regular website on, 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 the, on this time. So we do have actual information. If you look at the databases, you have information two years, three years old in the database because they upload and they call and sometimes I get the calls. How many revenue do you make? I'm, I'm from Dun & Bradstreet or something like that stuff. But they have to collect the data and the data, when they collect the data, next day it's old data. And we have regular data on the same day. Yeah, so mm -hmm. we have actual data that's where we need time. So we had some, some um, um, tests where we combined our addresses with old postal addresses from the databases. And they had um, um, a rejection of uh, about 10%, and we just only had uh, 2% because the address is okay. very, very correct at the end. So the and data you, can, you are, yeah. And you can, and, and, and you can look on the, on the difference between the websites and time. Yeah, okay, they changed the information of the address, for instance, mm -hmm. or there's this new people coming, a uh, new CEO, some of that stuff that is published on the website, especially in Germany where we have those rules of impressum. It's typical for Germany that every website has an impressum where we have to uh, write down who's the owner of the company. Yeah. Okay, I understand the point of, of more current data, of course, um, mm -hmm. but personally, I like, I like the idea of, of getting the right target groups much more more interesting because what you're saying is if I go to let's say Dun & Bradstreet or some of the other address um, offers in the market I get data like the size of the company turnover number of employees and maybe an industry sector like whatever dog breeders but if I want to have dog breeders of a special kind of dog I couldn't get them with them but you could say okay i only get poodles or i only get german shepherds or whatever i want so yeah. you, you have much more data because you use the data which is publicized by these companies on their own websites that's why right, yeah yeah we know okay we know. Yeah. i just got a question is that gdpr compliant it's GDPR compliant because we just only use the information of the company and it's uh, um, published all over the world and you can uh, analyze this so it's allowed to analyze the data. That's a German okay. law. Okay, it's a, it's, a, it's a German law that you are allowed to analyze it. But okay. I think it's, it's, it's probably EU European law as well. No, yeah. Euro, Euro, European. Yeah. European. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And if I now I am a postal operator, I'm I'm um, the German post or whatever, the Italy post post or the Cambodia post, doesn't really matter which country. How could I, um, well, um, have an have a advantage of, your, of that offer or that, well, don't say that offer, but that idea of crawling the web and using that data. How can I use that as a postal company? What would be my advantage? Uh, if you are interested in direct marketing area, you can find all those companies that use direct marketing. That means e-commerce companies uh, or any other companies that have a big amount of, of, of uh, direct marketing. Put, put it in the database and look what they are doing and find those profiles, those companies that are a little bit more in, in using um, uh, postal mails than emails and so on. You can put in the ah, database, so you can say, okay. you can say, okay, and if you are also a parcel deliverer, you can find on the website of the e-commerce companies which parcel deliverer they have. Yeah. So I could Do use that to DHL find, or? yeah, so I could use it to find my own companies, my own customers as opposed to companies. So I can yeah. identify which are the companies in the market who use direct mail, for example, which would be my customers, or they might use a, a competitor or something like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, is and there something else in it that I would like to offer a service to these? So um, I, I'm thinking indirect. So if I, if I find somebody who is, well, say, let's say dog breeders, he's, he's selling to dog breeders, mm -hmm. I could offer him as a post and company to give him better addresses um, of, yeah. of dog breeders and have some more direct mailings out, getting out of that? Yeah, to get more parcels, to get more direct mailings out of that. And you can, uh, if you are looking for the e-commerce sector, for instance, we made a project where, where you, if you are Royal Mail, you can find, okay, 
which e-commerce company is using Royal Mail or also UPS or, or Federal Express or some of like that stuff. Yeah, you can find those uh, uh, information on the website. Okay, so you get competitor usage as well, which is interesting. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Next question from, uh, sorry, yes, please. No, no, okay. Sorry. You wanted to say something? No, no, okay. <laughs> we just got a question from Marco Provasi. He is asking whether the approach of data analysis is different if you, uh, you uh, use it uh, to identify services or versus products. No, it's the same. It's the same algorithm for services and for product. It works in both areas. Because the, the company is describing what it does on its own website and it uses yeah. words to describe it, whether it's a service or a product, doesn't really matter. Yeah, okay. that's right. That's interesting. Okay. Another question, uh, if, if I am a postal operator and I would like to start um, to, to do something like that, to, to use data, from the web uh, and to offer a service like that to my customers um, in, let's say, Cambodia or let's say Namibia or wherever on this world. Uh, what would you recommend this this postal operator to do that? Yeah, start with Is your own just, database. Yeah. yeah. Start, start with your own database. You have a database of your clients expanded to the whole country. So in Namibia, we find all those companies in Namibia, make a database of all companies with, with websites, and then find the correct information for your products you have uh, in the postal office. And who is uh, nearby, who is a twin for which product uh, in the database. Okay. And then get the right contact information about the people that are working in this area and uh, contact them, maybe on LinkedIn, like, like you make, Martin, um, and so on. Okay. Um, oh God, I cannot really read that name. Shuang or Shuang Ming Han is asking for some data on data privacy and the legal framework in Germany or the EU. So, well, I can answer that one because I'm I'm <laughs> president of the German DMA. So um, I I will try to answer that one. Um, we have a European regulation on data privacy, which is called GDPR, the General Data Privacy Regulation, and this one works in all over Europe. Uh, but this is only for personal data, meaning pers data of individuals. So it's not about data which is open, uh, available about companies. And if I get it right, right. what Minot is doing here, <coughs> sorry, he is collecting data about companies and not data about persons. So that is the reason why you're doing this in a B2B uh, sector and you're not doing this in a B2C sector, right, Manat? That, that's why, yeah, that's why okay. we do it in the B2B. So that's the reason for that. So yeah. the next question we are getting is, how do you filter out the good websites or put it another way to do, you only look into secured websites like HTTPS. So. Um, do you make a difference between HTTPS or no, normal HTTP websites? No, there's, there's no difference. We just take the, 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 the uh, information from the website. It's that there's no difference between HTTP and HTTPS. It's the same information, just another protocol. Um, do we have some problems with Flash, for, so, for, for, for okay. sure, for Flash websites, but they are not uh, uh, common anymore. We have yeah. run about 2% of websites we can't crawl because they are too slow. They have some security uh, we can't uh, use, but we have 98% of websites we can crawl. So how do you get the, the websites, the, the domains? Um, because um, do you look into, into how, how do you get this information about which websites are out there? So if I put up a new website saying, uh, well, B2B, UPU, B2B, smart data approach, dot, dot mm -hmm. com, you don't know that website probably in your database. How do you find it? Because usually you make some digital um, things and we can find your website. Maybe if you are getting on, on, on a map service, using a map service where you can point your address, we find you there. Or ah. if you go to the yellow pages, we find you there. We have some different sources for this. Ah, so you, you, you build up, a, let's say, a library of all websites in the specific country which you use then. Yeah. 
Yeah, in Germany, okay. we have uh, 70, I think 70 million, 17 million websites at the moment. I think uh, 3 million are linked to companies, or maybe 3 and 3.9 at the moment. And because of the dog breeders, this is not a company, this is a part-time business for the, for the people. But mm -hmm. they are, for us, they are business addresses yeah. at the moment, yeah, because of our algorithm. Olivier is asking whether you collect the email addresses as well. Yeah, sometimes we do this for our clients, uh, but in Germany you are not allowed to use those email addresses without double opt-in. In other countries like US or, or not, not Europe, but uh, I think uh, outside Europe it's allowed to use this in email information. And we have some clients that use the inform email information without double opt in because they say they are uh, the email address is interested in the, in, the, in, in the information. Okay. So, but it's, it's possible. What, what else information do you get from the websites? You made an example that you get this fingerprint from all the worlds. Yeah. You had an example that you used the photos uh, or the description of the photos with the buses, I remember, if I remember this yeah. right. Yeah. You just told us that you use the email addresses. Are there, is there other data you, you scrap from these websites and you are using? We scrap everything. So we, we have okay. uh, some programs, some algorithms that scrap uh, uh, the owner of the company, the postal address, the email address, uh, and everything. The social media ah. accounts and so on. We, we have some uh, different algorithms on those topics uh, that use this information. Okay. So How I, many people are working there and so on? Yeah? Who is the doctor? Who is uh, the sister and so on? So you get a lot of, you, you collect all this information about the website and then I can use it in a different way depending on what I'm looking for. So if I'm looking for right. employees, you could deliver the number of employees. If I'm looking for whatever else, you, you, you start to, to collect, well, not collect, but use that data, but you're collecting everything you can get. Okay, yeah, I get right. that. Any more questions? I have to look whether there are more. Um, um, yeah, we already had that one from Olivier as well. How do you can use that data to boost post the direct marketing mailing? So yeah. it's saying that you, you would start to offer that as a postal company um, for, their, for their clients uh, who can use this data and then use more direct marketing in the B2B sector. Yeah. Um, I think we had a interesting um, 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 seminar on webinar on on LinkedIn in December with this group uh, and I think you are working together with the LinkedIn in some way as well can you go on that how you how you combine your data with LinkedIn yeah because when we look at the data of the company we can also find which LinkedIn profile is uh, linked linked LinkedIn <laughs> is linked, linked to the company <laughs> okay. it's linked to the company and so if you if you go to this approach you can use um we, we just wrote a german a book in german about uh, hitchhiker, hitchhiker's guide through linkedin where you can just click on and find the correct people in the company you want to contact yeah. ah, so, so have, you identify saying okay company a might be might be having the same fingerprint as your target company so it might be interesting yeah. but you don't know which are the people in the company. So you're linking that one to LinkedIn. Yeah. And then I can use LinkedIn to identify who is head of sales or who is head of marketing or who is doing the direct marketing in the company as well. So I get from the, let's say from the company level to the employee level, I get go, I go to LinkedIn and to use that to go down on yeah. the employee level. Okay. To that make, makes to make to make social selling, to get in contact with the people, say, okay, are you the right person for my product and so on, um, to get in contact. Yeah. We are okay. using it also in our company. It's very, very successful at the moment. So I'm just getting two more questions. So one is from Mohamed. He said he's using Jonas.com to check the website. Um, is that good enough to lay on it? Um, I assume, Mohamed, that you are using Jonas.com to get some information about the website. So yeah. how fast it is or um, how often it is uh, um, um, made current or something like that. But probably you won't get the data from Jonas.com. You have your own crawlers miner to do that yeah. or what are you, yeah. how you, what are you using? 
we use uh, similar things like Jonas.com to find, okay, do they have a redirection or some of that stuff uh, and so on and, and error information and all those things. Um, it's good enough if you if you do so, but if you want to get a little bit more deeper in it, you need to crawl in information about it. That's so crawling it. means you have some kind of computer program which goes to that website, looks what is on the websites, download all the information from the websites onto your your well your servers or your virtual servers, and then you can use the data. So you're going deeper than Jonas.com is going yeah, doing. Yeah, that's right. Okay. That's right. Yeah. Um, the other question is from Olivier. He is asking about about B two C. Is your approach being used in that space as well? No, not at the moment. Um, and, um, because of GDPR restrictions in Europe, so we do just only for for business websites. B two B. It's it's probably you could probably do something like that if you have the full access to to all the social networks. You could pr probably use the same methods. Yeah, but it's it's just not allowed to do it that way, right? Yeah. Okay. We are not we are, we, are, we, are, we are not Cambridge Analytica or some of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but in a way, it's what what Cambridge Analytica did on on voters in the U.S. It's it's probably the same. Well, it's it's it looks a little bit like the same methods: collecting all the data of the voters using some AI to to well to to get some predictions of what they might behave or what they might vote. Yeah. And then you can start to address them. So it, it, in a way, it's the same approach to use data. But the difference is that what Cambridge Analytica did wasn't allowed. And what you are doing is, is very much allowed. And it's not a problem in the, in the B2B space. Yeah, that's right. And I like the idea to use open, open available data from, from websites where companies are talking about themselves and, and telling what they are doing. And just use that data, which is open, available in a, in a different way than you normally do it. That makes sense. Okay, someone is typing, so there are some thanks. Oh, there's another question. If the conclusion is as good as your data, what are the main pitfalls and accuracy you had to deal when you're processing your data sets? A common mistake and misleading conclusions we should be careful with. That's an interesting question. Thanks, Daniel. Um, so what are the, the main problems you, you encounter when you do this data analysis? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it, it depends on the target group. Um, if you are advertising company for pens, uh, for, for printing on pens, everybody needs pens. So the target group is very wide. Mm -hmm. um, we made some pro projects there. We were not successful. Yeah, because okay. Our, our method is too expensive to compare it with the addresses uh, you get when you go to, to Bisnode or to Dun & Bradson. Uh, yeah. okay. So if, if the target group is too broad, it's not specific yeah. enough, then yeah. you have a problem because, well, you, you can only, well, it, it's better to find specific target groups, okay? That's right, that's right. And in, in, in former times, in the first uh, um, one or two years, we had some problems with blocks on this information because uh, blogs are not companies. But mm -hmm. uh, so we have to filter it out and we made an algorithm for this. And uh, so uh, this uh, uh, pitfall is now away. Um, so it depends on the precise of the, of the database. Mm -hmm. And it depends on not to count every word on the website, but to compare it with the whole uh, area of your country. And uh, this is uh, the, the, main, the main point um, why we are so successful in Germany, in German market, because uh, we do not count how many words are on the websites, but we combine it with the, with the whole area of Germany. Uh, so so I the see, relation, yeah. yeah, I think if I, if that was one of my questions, actually, when I read that from, from Daniel, um, there are, let's say, common words like the or uh, or yeah. whatever, one or something like that. So yeah. you get rid of these common words in combining or in comparing what is on the website in comparing these to others because everybody is using the. Yeah. Uh, you don't use the word the because it's just, uh, yeah, element noise is what Daniel is saying. Yeah. And that's actually what, what you're doing with this comparison. Yeah, okay, that's, that's nice. interesting. And okay. the noise, the, the noise is the HTML language. Uh, we 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 um, read it. Uh, we have a, a special algorithm for this to get all those information. So we only get the clear text on the website. Yeah, this is what okay. we use for our database. Yeah. yeah. 
Makes sense. So thanks a lot, Maynard, for uh, not only presenting this, but answering all these questions. Um, thanks for the ones who asked questions for, for helping us in this dialogue. So making a real talk about that and, and a dialogue out of that. And I think um, Olivier wanted to tell us a little bit about the next one. So um, Olivier, I'm just giving you um, the possibility to open your microphone and your camera. Here you are again. Hello, Olivier. Thank you, thank you Martin. Uh, hello, everybody again. And, and thank you very much, Maina, for, for that very, very, very interesting presentation. And, and I, I think you have provided some uh, very, uh, very interesting elements for our, our um, viewers today in how to maybe go to the next level in terms of, uh, you know, using data analytics in, in building up uh, marketing campaigns for clients. Uh, it's really yeah. about the, the whole point of that discussion is really to bring new ideas to uh, to uh, to the participants on on how to use that that gold mine of data that is available there and how they can enhance their their value propositions for their direct marketing clients. So that's that's really the the, the point of that discussion and the point of our innovation uh, talks is to bring a different view, different perspective, and and to go to the next level. So thank you very much, and I hope that was uh, really interesting to everybody. Um, the next session will be in April, uh, 8th of, 8th of April. Uh, we're going to take a little bit of a break in March, uh, and uh, we're going to meet again uh, early April. So everybody, please take a note in your calendar. 8th April, you will receive uh, an email from uh, Abby and, or myself uh, or Martin or the three of us together uh, on the topic. Uh, we're still working on it, but we, we're sure that we're going to bring you uh, a new perspective again on, on, on the way you do direct marketing, on the way you use your your channels to uh, to propose and, and offer a new uh, type of campaigns to your clients and how you enhance your value proposition to your clients. So that's the whole point of our talks, is to bring new dimensions and new perspective to your to your daily business. Uh, we hope that you really enjoyed that uh, that session again. Thank you, Maynard and uh, Martin, back to you. And uh, see you very soon, all of you. Bye. Thanks, Olivier, for that final words. Thanks, Maynard, once again, for being our presenter today and that interesting topic. I think it's it's really interesting to see what you are doing with data. We are Everybody of us is going to a website every day and we just go to one or two or five websites. But what you are doing to going to 17 million websites is totally different. It's the same data, but it's a different approach. And I really think there's a lot of in, in that approach for, for direct marketing um, business. So thanks a lot for that. Um, I see a lot of thanks to you from the audience. Uh, I'm saying thank you to the audience as well. Have a great day for the ones where it is still morning, like in Europe, have a great uh, afternoon or evening for the ones who are still already on the other side of the world and where the day is going to an end. And I hope that we all see you again back on April the 8th uh, to the next uh, innovation talk. And bye-bye from Europe to all over the world. Bye-bye.